So what we want to do now is sort of narrow our discussion a little bit, and instead of considering just a really general system with an equivalent or closed loop transfer function T of S, let's consider only unity feedback systems. So I've got a unity feedback system drawn below, so you can see we have a forward gain G of S, or as it's also called an open loop transfer function G of S. And so the idea there is that before we close this feedback loop, so if we were to take this feedback loop out, that would be our open loop transfer function. So that's just sort of a little uh, sort of background on the notation there. And so ultimately we're going to see in later videos why it's useful to have that expression for steady state error in terms of our G of S, but for now let's just go ahead and find what that is. And so first let's add some notation to this diagram. So we have our R of S and C of S labeled. Let's go ahead and add our E of S right here. So this is our error signal because again by definition it's going to be our input R of S minus our output C of S. And so let me just highlight something else here. Of course, we have a unity gain feedback, which means our H of S is just equal to one. Okay, so we can do sort of similar analysis as to what we saw in the previous video. So we can say our error signal is of course our R of S minus C of S, as I just said. And just like we did before, we can say, well, really our C of S or Yes, yeah, so, so we can say our C of S is really just our error signal E of S times that open loop transfer function G of S. And so what we can do now is we can solve for E and we'll get something very similar to what we did when we saw, when we were looking at our feedback form in our system reduction unit. And we get that this error signal is equal to R of S divided by one plus G of S. So before we sort of continue, let me just point out that as we stated earlier, we can see that it is our error signal is going to depend on the input as we stated in a previous video, as well as on the configuration in the system. In this case, unity feedback, so that's why we get this form here, uh, as opposed to some different form if we had different blocks cascaded and parallel and feedback forms. Um, so two things that our, error, our steady state error will depend on. But again, what we're interested in for steady state error is we want E as T is going towards infinity. So we want E in our time domain. So remember what we're going to use to get that is our final value theorem. And so with our final value theorem, we can then say that our E of infinity is going to be the limit as S goes to zero of S times our E of S. Well, our E of S is just that R of S over one plus G, so we get S times R of S in the numerator divided by one plus G of S in the denominator. And so this is our general equation for our unity feedback system. So again, keep in mind that this is for unity feedback only. And sort of to be more specific, it, it does need to be negative feedback. Of course, we could adjust that by changing that sign there if we needed to. Um, but this is unity feedback, and this is a general expression for any input. And what we're going to do in the following videos is we're going to come back and we're going to consider the cases of different types of input R of S, and we're going to see how that affects our expected steady state error and what types of requirements we need from our G of S in order to meet certain specifications. And I know all of that's really vague, but it'll make more sense as we look at some specific examples later on.